Hey, this is Tom from Mr. Game Fight Club, and welcome to How to Rage, the Primal Rage tutorial. Uh, you know, the first question on your mind about this is, um, why though? Uh, and you know, I can't even fault you for that. Uh, Primal Rage has not been relevant in, God, when did this come out? It's 26 years ago. <laughs> And um, even even back in the day, it was popular for about uh, it was popular for about twenty minutes. <laughs> so, you know, so so to answer the question, we we have to go back to nineteen ninety four, uh, when I was just a young lad of uh, ten ten years old. Imagine, if you will, uh, going to your local shopping mall, and walking up on the arcade, and you see just this humongous crowd of people uh, right there at the entrance and they're all crowded on one, one machine you can't even see it so you start to walk up and and you hear it right you you hear the noises there's all this thumping and roaring and you hear claws and uh, it's just like wow what is making all that noise and then you see it you see this ginormous thing. It's it's a huge arcade cabinet with a big screen and stereo speakers and a console, uh, just for just for their controls. And then on screen you have these dinosaurs beating the tar out of each other, and it's like whoa! And the the life bar is that a, is that a heart? Is the heart a life bar? That's crazy! And there's so much blood. This is awesome. This is just like the best thing ever. You know, I'm 10 years old. I mean, what's what's not to love about fighting dinosaurs? So Primal Rage was really the first fighting game that I really wanted to learn. And I took it home when it was released on consoles for the Sega Genesis. And that's how I learned to play the game. And eventually, I took that knowledge back to the arcades, and I made it my mission. It was like my God-given purpose to go around town and get the high score on every single machine uh, that I came across. Now, this particular screenshot is uh, a bit more recent. Uh, this was shot in Evansville uh, at... It's not High Score Saloon. What's the other one? Secret Headquarters. Secret Headquarters has its own arcade. It's got like, it's a combination like shop slash arcade kind of deal. And they happen to have a Primal Rage machine. I was like, dude, for old time's sake, I gotta, I, I have to, I have to put my name on that. <laughs> and I, I saw a couple of days later, they, they, they took a screenshot to advertise their arcade again and they cleared my score. They cleared it off. It's like, it's too big, man. It's too big. <laughs> All right, so if you were to try and pick this game up today, your natural reaction might be to uh, just emulate it off of MAME, the arcade emulator. Well, there's a couple problems with that. I mean, it is still playable for the most part. However, uh, you're going to run into some problems or some, some weird stuff. Uh, you're going to notice some of the, the blood has turned like this weird yellowish brownish color. And there is some sprite offsetting issues. Uh, after hard knockdowns, some of the characters will either be floating on top of the, like on top of the stage, or they will fall under it. So it's just this weird stuff going on. Some of the specials don't work. Some of the inputs gets dropped. So uh, yeah, the reason for that is that some of the code is encrypted. So despite whatever a developer on consoles may claim there is no such thing as an arcade perfect copy of the game. It does not matter. Um, Atari and whoever owns the rights now have said publicly that they are not interested in lifting this protection uh, for any reason, uh, whether that be for archival or preservation or anything else. They do not care enough to, to get rid of it. And even the original devs are like, dude, that was like forever ago. I have, I don't even know how. So with that in mind, I, I did make this chart. It's, it's pretty subjective. 
Uh, really, the point I'm trying to get across is that no matter what you do, there's going to be some some give. There's going to be some compromises. Uh, I will say that for ease of emulation, uh, the PlayStation version is probably the way to go. If you want graphics fidelity, uh, the Saturn and uh, Midway Arcade Treasures 2, which released on GameCube, PlayStation 2, um, and Xbox, original Xbox. Uh, those those will do pretty good. And strangely enough, just like for straight gameplay, uh, Microsoft DOS, <laughs> that's my favorite version, just for like arcade accurate gameplay, just like the hitboxes hit where they're supposed to, combos work the way they're supposed to, but the sound, the sound is so bad. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but just for the sake of comparison, Here's a few screenshots. There is some pixelation on the DOS version, but it's not it's not too bad. Uh, the PlayStation version tends to be a little bit muddy. Uh, the pixels kind of blend into each other. And then uh, Saturn and Midway Arcade Treasures. This one's a little bit faded. I didn't really notice that before. It's a little bit washed out. But uh, those are the uh, highest graphics fidelity uh, as, as compared to MAME. Uh, now here's a brief rundown of controls. This is a four button fighter. Uh, the nomenclature they use is high, quick, high, fierce, low, quick, low, fierce, but these are kind of misleading. Uh, what that means is that the high attacks are usually with either arms or claws uh, or teeth, and low attacks are usually using the legs or tails. Not that those uh, particular attacks hit high or low on a character per se. Um... It is typical uh, in four button fighters to refer to them by their number rather than their literal name. So, you know, one, two, three, four. And that is what I'm going to be doing as well. Uh, now, in terms of control, uh, however, how you're going to be playing this, uh, a stick definitely is preferred. Uh, not for the sake of, you know, being a lead, just like, oh, you need an arcade stick. No, uh, I'll get into why here in just a moment. But if you're going to use uh, a gamepad, you're going to have to use claw style. And what I mean by that, I have one handy. All right, so here's, here's, here's a, a controller. So you're going to have to hold it more or less like this. You're going to have to have, you know, your, your four and middle fingers on the buttons. Because very, very often of the time, you're going to be pushing two or more buttons at the same time, and you're going to be alternating between them. And it's just like you can't do it one button at a time. You, you just can't. All right. Video? Video. Thank you. All right. So again, four button fighter. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you push... One and two together to get high power. You push three and four together to get low power. Pretty simple stuff. Now, combos. Combos work the same way as they do in most fighters, where you progress from light to heavy. Uh, in this case, light will be one or three, medium being two or four, and heavy being the powers. So one plus two or three plus four. So that's one, two, one, two, high power. Three, four, low power. And that progression is true, whether you are on the ground, uh, whether you are crouching, or whether you are jumping. It's all the same. Now, you may not necessarily get all three attacks from all three positions, but that is the progression. Always, always in that progression. Uh, jumping. Jumping. Movement tech. There isn't a whole lot to talk about. However, there are three different kinds of jumps. Right? There's your, your normal, everyday, neutral jump. Right? And then you have quick jump. You do that by uh, either pushing forward or back, down, and then up. It's kind of a wonky way to do it. Most, oh, excuse me, most games will just have you tap up. But you have to do two extra inputs to do the quick, to do the quick jump. And there's also super jump. That's your that's your get out of dodge, or or for uh, cross ups potentially. 
You do that by pushing uh, down and then your jump. So down, then up. Or down, then forward jump. Or down, then back jump. Whichever. That's really all I've, all there is to uh, to movement tech. Alright, so let's get into some, uh, some uh, deep character tutorials. I won't do all of them, just because I don't have enough time. I'm going to dial back my mic a little bit. I'm peaking quite a lot. Alright. So let's get into some in-depth character tutorials. Again, I won't do all of them, but I will highlight a few characters. Uh, they do roughly fit into a number of archetypes. Uh, Sauron here, he is a Shoto character. So in general, you want to stay at range and throw fireballs and then punish jump ends. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's talk about some, uh, some normals. From standing, standing two, pretty good. You got a little bit of uh, distance there. Pretty good poke. Uh, you can also use standing low power for a little bit of... A little bit of range. Standing four is okay, but I think uh, standing low power is where it's at. Uh, it's pretty universal for every character for crouching low power to be a sweep. Uh, crouching three is also a pretty good poke. Right, then you can follow that up with either four or low power. Jumping. In general, yeah, on the PlayStation version, the music freaks out. I don't know why. Jumping. If you're going air to air, you want jumping high power. If you are going against a standing opponent or a crouching opponent, you want jumping low power or perhaps jumping four. They both work equally well. All right, so let's get into some specials. Again, he's a Shoto, so you want to stand back and uh, do your specials from range. Oh, right, I should mention this. <laughs> Another reason to play stick is because the specials are performed uh, by a concept called negative edge. Uh, Capcom players in particular may be familiar with this technique where you hold your buttons first and then you use your directional input. Uh, this is something that put a lot of people off of Primal Rage. They're not used to that. Now, eventually, as the versions of the arcade game progressed, they made it such that you could do it the traditional way. But by that point, I mean, people had people had moved on. Uh, I do still recommend the negative edge method because, again, you're going to be traveling the buttons uh, in, in pretty rapid succession. So it helps to have uh, a couple fingers on the buttons anyway as you progress through the combos. So yes, anyway. Stun Roar. 1-3 back forward. That is your standard fireball. And as Shoto does, you want to punish jump ends when they get over it. And they will. There's a couple ways you can do that. Cranium Crusher. 1-4 down up. I did, I, I did that one correctly, yes? Yes. 1-4 down up. That covers a lot of airspace. Uh, however, the drawback is that it is extremely vulnerable to whiff punish. If you see how long it takes for him to return to Earth. And it's also going to whiff against uh, close jump ends. So you really want to use this for medium and long range. Uh, fortunately for Sauron, he also has a close jump encounter. 1-3 down up. This is the Primal Scream. Primal Scream. That, uh, that shield will protect you from all jump-ins and jump-in specials. You can also use it up close for just like a get-off-me sort of move. Very, very handy. Earthquake Stomp. Now, this is kind of a niche technique. So, one, two, four, all three buttons. You have to push them, or hold them, up, down. Very good for uh, aerial combos. Uh, notice that there are two varieties. The ground variety will send the character forward if you perform this in air. Come on. Come on. I know you can do it. There you are. That will send the character mostly up. So you'll have to keep that in mind. All right, and then uh, the throws. Uh, pretty standard stuff. Two, four, 
forward back. And notice that it tossed Blizzard all the way across the screen, so that gives you your distance back. Pretty handy. Uh, air throw. Oh, yeah, let's just make it simple. Yep, 2-4 in air, that's all you have to do. Uh, leaping Bone Bash, 2-3, down up down. You do not want to use that uh, attack very often, despite the fact that it does do quite a bit of damage. Uh, just because, again, look at how you are in the air quite often. You can see this coming. So use it sparingly. Uh, it's also just kind of like a noob punish, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Like, oh god, what do I do? Uh, it's, it's extremely easy to counter. Uh, let's talk about some combos. So, I was talking about uh, standing. So let's go standing to low power into Primal Scream. Pretty simple three-hitter that you can do from a comfortable distance. Uh, Cranium Crusher goes with everything. Uh, it's, it's a nice little combo ender. So from crouching, uh, down three low power... Cranium Crusher. Or or perhaps standing. Oh, come on. Let's, let's cooperate. Ish. Ish, yeah. Uh, neck throw, again. Uh, pretty standard stuff. I like to use it from standing and up close. If you need to give, uh, give yourself some distance from a player who is very good at playing pressure. Uh, Primal Scream, uh, much the same way that you would play Cranium Crusher. However, you do have that range to deal with. It is very, very low range. So corner is good or extremely, extremely close, uh, say from a power, high power or low power. You, you really don't have a lot to work with. Earthquake Stomp. It is entirely possible to use the Earthquake Stomp in a combo. However, the timing is extremely tight. Uh, I will attempt it here. I'll give it a few tries before I move on. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. That's about the size of it. You're, you're not going to get a lot of juggles off of that uh, Earthquake Stomp. Okay. Let's uh, let's go to the next character. Oh, I should have used a safe state. We'll move on a little bit faster. Next up, let's talk about Talon a little bit. Talon is our runaway character. You are not going to expect big numbers in terms of combos from him because his job is to do damage and get out of the way. Let me move this over just a smidgen. Okay, normals. Again, we're looking for fast attacks. So standing low power is probably your go-to from standing. Standing high power is also good for anti-air, uh, that hitbox extends uh, to to high, high and middle. Uh, standing, or, or rather crouching, crouching high power will also catch anti-air to some degree. Uh, from crouch, crouching four is a slide, but does not uh, sweep. It's, it's great for very fast damage that you can combo into low power, so like so. And that has quite a bit of range, too. Uh, jumping air to air, uh, I would suggest either jumping two or jumping high power. It's not great, but it will work. Uh, again, much like Sauron, jumping four or jumping low power will be the way to go against standing or crouching. 
Uh, let's talk about these specials. He is the only character who can run. So if you hold 1-3 and then push forward or backward, he, he moves in quite fast. So you can use that to advance uh, safely uh, if you use like an advancing guard technique, which the AI often does. Slasher, 1-3-4. Down forward. Uh, this will catch air. Uh, but up close, uh, it's not going to do... A, it's not going to do a lot of damage. And B, you are left open for attack immediately afterwards. So if you're going to use this move from standing, or, or rather against a standing opponent, you want to run away as fast as possible. Get out of there. Uh, I use it from sweep so that you at least have the benefit of time uh, from from the hard knockdown. Uh, pounce and flip. Two, three. Dragon punch. It's a it's a nice little uh, it's a quick little three hit special. I, not much to say about it. If you can get a, a quick uh, little combo off of it from say standing low power. That'd be Get you some extra damage. Pounce, uh, a Brain Bash. Brain Bash, this is a combo opener. This used to be a special just kind of like on, on its own, where you would bounce and then and jump off. Uh, and later versions of the, of the game, this was tweaked so that you can then start a combo with it. Um, you can use this to get over projectiles. So if you have a zoner, uh, just get over it with the, uh, the, the, the Brain Basher. Jugular Bite. This is the only throw that is available that you can only perform during a combo. Uh, it is a finisher. So you are you are going to end combos with that. You are not going to start them or, or link them. Oh, excuse me. Uh, if you try to do it from crouching, a lot of times you're going to accidentally do the throw. The, the next one, Throw Ripper. Say if I was going to do crouching for, come on, crouching for, crouching for, yeah, it goes into, a lot of the times the inputs will pick up that you pushed down and now you have to push forward to go into the jugular bite, so it'll just do the throw instead. Uh, as with all throws, it's unblockable. However, if, uh, I guess I should also uh, take this moment to explain cheese. Uh, this game has an anti-cheesing system where that prevents you from spamming uh, attacks. If the character is in block stun, they cannot be thrown. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, let's talk about a few combos. Again, uh, Brain Basher is a great opener. So if you go from Brain Bash into low power and then continue either on the ground or, for, or into crouching. Oh, I didn't talk about Frantic Fury. I missed that one. Okay, Frantic Fury, 1-4, down forward. Scary as hell. You're going to scare the fuck out of a noob. So how that move works is you can make that duration last as, what, as much as you want to. You can go from full screen, 1-4, down forward. Hold 1-4, and the move will continue. Uh, it is also a combo ender, as you just saw uh, a moment ago. I do find that Talon's combos are much more consistent from crouching rather than, say, trying to continue an air combo uh, from standing. Uh, his his combos do tend to push him a push him back a little bit. But if you are going to go into standing, I would suggest ending the combo with pounce and flip. Uh, the 2 3 dragon punch, uh, just to close that gap. Uh, now, again, as, as I was saying at the top of his tutorial, Talon is mostly runaway. You're not going to get big damage numbers off of combos. Just do the damage, get out of there. Wash, rinse, repeat. And the fact that he has a smaller hitbox, he's a short character, uh, gives him plenty of advantages to do exactly that. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Blizzard. <laughs> a 
<laughs> Blizzard has quite a few specials. Oof. I mean, they're mostly... They're mostly one move, but, like, broken up into four different varieties. Okay. Uh, normals. Standing two is a pretty good little jab. But you can usually follow that up with high power. Standing four is anti-air. Almost exclusively. You have to be, like, extremely close for that to hit from standing. From crouching. Uh, crouching four is it's a little slow. Uh, but it will work. If you do manage to hit, you can go straight into low power. It's pretty reliable. Uh, Anti-air. Uh, actually, his anti-air is pretty good. So jumping one or jumping two will both work splendidly well. Jumping high power less so? Uh, it, it, the, it tends to hit kind of low. So if you're going air to air, use jumping one or jumping two. Uh, against... Uh, against standing or crouching. Uh, jumping high power is okay. I really would use it. I would go jumping four or jumping a low power. It's kind of the way to go. Uh, oh, and crouching. Crouching two and crouching high power are both effective against air as well. Uh, it actually gives you a little bit more, a little bit more room than, say, standing four. But standing four is faster. Okay, here we go. Just a lot of specials. It's freeze breath. One, two, four, back forward. Does what you expect. Not, not a whole lot to say about it. One, two, four, down up. Ice geyser. Now that is your bread and butter. Uh, you want to use that as often as you can. However, it only hits uh, close. If you try to do it from back here, you got nothing. It will catch jumping or crouching, but... The character has to be very, very close. Uh, that will be your combo linker and is one of the few uh, specials of the game that is. Uh, Mega Punch. There's there's a lot of these. So Mega Punch, uh, short, 1-3, back forward. That's a combo ender. Or or perhaps a... a well, I wouldn't use it just for, for faster damage, but you can, I suppose. It's telegraphed a little too much. Uh, the long variety. Yeah, you got that? The fast one. Now, that's the one you want for fast damage. You hold all the buttons and then back forward. And then the fake out is 1-3 down up. Uh, punching bag. This is an interesting one. It's basically a throw. So you hold a 1 plus 4 and then rotate from forward all the way back to up. Now, uh, keep an eye on the brainstem up there. That is the stun bar. So that's how much time you have to continue the uh, punching bag move. You keep tapping 1 to box. And then the other buttons, 2, 3, and 4, will... Uh, end that punching bag move either with a low arc, a medium arc, or a high arc. That was the short one. There's there's the uh, the long one. And I, I suggest always going with the high arc, because you can follow that up with more moves. Even from all the way back up there. Throw. Pretty standard stuff. Two, three. Back up, forward. Uh, air throw, which I you just saw me do. Two, three in air. No big. Now this dude is a combo master. Now you cannot use both freeze moves in the same combo, but you, you, I mean you generally don't need it. Um, my favorite, my go-to is to go from low into ice geyser into an air combo. It's pretty flashy. I like it a lot. Uh, you may be also be able to get away with some uh, jump-ins to standing. Oh, hang on. And then end with uh, a Mega Punch. And works pretty well. Oh, hang on. That works. 
If you can work it in, uh, the punching bag will catch your opponent uh, off guard because often they're waiting for you, like, for, like, they're, like, checking their watch, like, God damn it, how long is this combo to go on? If you end with a punching bag, uh, you can take advantage of how long those combos do tend to get. All right, come on, cooperate with me. All right, so on and so forth. All right, so I think it's time for some actual gameplay. Oh, I guess I can talk about the other characters briefly before I, before I do that. Uh, Vertigo uh, is your zoner. She's a dedicated zoner, so if she has the most range out of all of her normals than any other characters. She has two... She has two varieties of the same projectile, and she has um, some combo enders that go full screen. She also has some combo linker specials that either stun or, or drag your opponent back in. Uh, very tricky very versus AI, though, I have to say. Uh, they, they can read her moves from a mile away. Chaos is good for pressure. He also has two varieties of the same projectile, uh, but he also has some moves that will close the gap and uh, keep that melee pressure in. Armadon is kind of a weird one. Because I kept, I keep wanting to call him a turtle. Because, you know, he's got a great big shell. He's got these spikes on his back, but he's not. He's he's like a heavy Shoto, I guess. Now, his uppercuts do tend to be a little short range, but he's got them. And he's got two anti-air moves. So, I, I you know... That's that. That's the way. That's what a shadow is and does. But he also does the most damage of any character in the game, so that kind of qualifies as heavy too. Uh, Diablo, in in a sense, is similar to Chaos in that he's very good for applying pressure. He's got two projectile speeds. Uh, he has a teleport, and his teleport is unique in that if you do it from close range, it does stun damage, and then you can link a combo that way. So he's actually also quite good. All right, let's turn these cheats off. Oh, I don't think I actually applied that. Okay. Boink. All right. Now, I will play through the game as Sauron. Uh, I think he's a good character to start with if you have never played this game before. Uh, he's easier to learn. Just because he is similar to characters you've seen a million times, right? He is the Ryu of this game. Uh, I've turned the difficulty down a little bit. Uh, I, think, I think I turned it down to 12 from the maximum, which is 16. Not because I can't do it, but because... Well, the AI cheats. AI is AI. And... I can still do... Uh, a, a one-credit playthrough, but... It, it's not as interesting to watch. Now, versus the AI on Blizzard, what you want to do is whiff punish that Mega Punch. Ooh. Come here, big guy. Come here, big guy. Oh, whoops. That was not what I meant to do. Poke. Poke, poke. Let's move that back over. Now, if I can manage to work it in, I will finish these combos either with uh, the throw 
or a Cradium Crusher. But he's... There we go. Easy peasy lemon squeeze me. I love that finisher. Now, unfortunately, on PlayStation, like, it doesn't have enough memory to do, like, the full finisher. Um, it just kind of... <laughs> it just basically just transforms them into a pancake. But in the arcade version, like, there's, like, blood splatter and bits and shit. Just... just <sighs> it's great. Diablo, he is pressure, so you want to out-pressure the pressure. Don't let him gain momentum, because he will absolutely tear you to pieces. Do it any way you can, from range, from up close, from jumping. Do it, but get in there. Again, using that primal scream, that uh, aerial shield as, as kind of like a get off me. And it's relatively safe from blocks, so go for it whenever you have the chance. Uh, this game really rewards aggressive gameplay, so don't be afraid to really get in there. Oh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but it is important to do finishing moves as often as you can. Um, for reasons that I will bring up later. Armadon, again, he is a Shoto. You have to keep that in mind as you approach him. Uh, often I find it is safer to just let him come to you. And let him make a silly mistake that you can capitalize on. And that move there, uh, the Iron Maiden, as it's called, that leaping move, is the highest damaging move in the game. You do not want to get caught by that. For any reason. However, it can be useful as bait. So because it goes over projectiles, if you have enough room... Oh, I should have hit confirm that. If you have enough room, you can bait that so that you can jump out of the way and uh, do like a jump in combo. Yeah, come and get it, big guy. How's it going, Sexy Girl Dancer? Uh, the Mystery Fighting Game Tournament is delayed. Because, you know, again, I'm, I'm running everything. Uh, that will be... Uh, that will be directly after How to Rage. So, um, yeah, stick around. I will definitely get that... Uh, I will definitely get that rolling, and I will announce it on all the social medias, etc. Discord. Cool, cool. Hope that went well for you. <laughs> yeah, of course it took two hours. Because that's what happens, right? That's okay. Schedule is a suggestion at this point, so I'm not, like, super worried about it.
Mo content is more better. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, especially if it serves the panel. I mean, I have, I have no, I have no qualms with that. All right, Chaos. He will absolutely apply pressure from range. That uh, that fart there is an instant stun, and it has an enormous hitbox. Uh, so you just kind of have to deal with it. Uh, even getting over it with characters that have uh, overhead moves like that uh, have a hard time getting over that hitbox. Often he will use it to cover his advance and make it more safe. Uh, either from air or from or from the ground. Come on, where are you at? Yeah, work in that air throw as often as you can too. I mean, it's free damage. You don't even have to push the directional uh, buttons. You just you just push two buttons and you're done. No, I preemptively went for a primal scream. It didn't have to. PlayStation version only has one of the cheering samples. <laughs> Halfway home. We got vertigo. Vertigo's anti-air is garbage, so that's that's pretty much what I stick to. She will often jump to try and anti-air you, and it just it just doesn't work. So if you are, what that means is, if you are playing Vertigo, you want to stay on the move. Uh, you want to get on the other side of jump ends by using teleports. Um, or if you have room, you might be able to get away with, um, uh, the, the hypnotizing stare or whatever the stun move is. Sometimes that will catch jump ins. I mean, not especially well, but it, it can. I was wondering when the spam bop was going to show up. And right, give me that scrawny neck. Uh, we got we got the mirror match and we got Talon left. Ooh, I do not like to fight Talon late. It doesn't matter who you are playing as. Talon is a son of a bitch. So I will cheese him out any way I can. Now on the PlayStation version, so you know that move I told you not to use. If you're playing the PlayStation version, you can use this leaping bone bash. He will attempt to counter it with standing high power. It will fail, and you'll just eat him. However, uh, that is the only version of the game I have observed that this technique works. If you are playing in the arcade, or if you are playing, say, Saturn, or uh, DOS, whatever the case may be, I recommend using the Air Earthquake Stomp, for whatever reason. The AI will then attempt to do the jugular bite? I don't get it. I, I don't understand. But you can spam the Earthquake Stomp, and it works just as well against Talon, uh, Talon's AI. Otherwise, it is just a nightmare trying to do damage against him. I mean, he is god-tier in terms of runaway characters in, in fighting games.
You're wrecked. And that's that leaves the mirror match. Which against Sauron is quite tricky. It's quite tricky. Okay. So I'm gonna to try to use quick jumps to get over his his projectile attacks. Although I've noticed on the PlayStation version, he doesn't use them very much. Um every other version of the game, he he plays a traditional Shoto. He will throw fireballs all goddamn day. And then will anti-air you when you jump over it. PlayStation version? Not as much. All right, one round away from world domination. Perhaps PlayStation version toned down the, the Shoto behavior on purpose? I'm not sure. It's a guess. It's just a guess. I don't often get flawless victories on him. I think I did finishers on all the characters. That's a good thing. All right. Now, this game originally did have a final boss planned, but it got scrapped and he was placed in the Primal Rage 2, which never got made. <laughs> There's a prototype fly floating around that you can play and it is playable somewhat, but of course it is extremely unfinished. All right, so for the final battle, you have an opportunity to gain a second health bar. And the way you do that is by uh, using a special move just for eating people. Um, you will never use this move outside of this mode. I mean, you can. You can use it mid-fight if you want to to regain some health, but you'll, you'll never do, do that, actually. Alright, now I'm gonna save it here because it tends to bug out on, on occasion. And also the PlayStation version does not have the final battle music, which is which is a shame. It really does kind of add to the tension. Oh, what is going on here? Anyway. So I mentioned that doing finishers against all the characters is important, and the final battle is why. Because you have to refight all of the characters. If you perform finishers on them, they are flashing and will have much less health. But if you don't perform finishers, they will have full health and you have to fight all seven characters. Uh, I'm taking a little too much damage for being on the second character already. Oh, I jumped too early. Whoops. See, that was a 36% uh, combo that did, like, 55 damage, actually. Alright, was that three? Or was that four? I think it's three. And the reason I wait there is because uh, that bed of nails move has an active hitbox for, for some time, and you kind of have to wait. Oh. 
God. Stop. All right. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to get out the corner. Who we got? Chaos, Talon, and... Blizzard. This is going to get dicey. Oh, he could have ended it right there. I don't like to be in a corner with chaos. Oh, I don't like to be in a corner with chaos. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to continue. There's just no way. Yep. Oh, wised up a little bit. <laughs> Actually blocking. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can get the pattern going now. One more. He's done. That leaves Blizzard. And we're out of here. One more hit. Could be anything. And we're done. <sighs> now let's see what happens when the God of Hunger takes down all other opponents. When he is released from his sleep of ages by the catastrophe, he soon realized that he must devour human flesh to remain immortal. Ooh, that spells, uh, doom for everybody else. Yep, we just, we just have piles and piles of stripped humans for him to feast on. Well, it's not quite a one credit clear, but it's good enough to put me on top of the pile. And Primal Rage, when you get to number one, they let you use 18 characters <laughs> to put your name in. And I always sign my name this way. Tom still rages on. There she is. Now, before I go, <laughs> I wanted to show you this classic or, uh, or this uh, console exclusive uh, cutscenes. The PlayStation, uh, the PlayStation version and the Saturn version have these 3D animated uh, cutscenes. And boy, they're a treat. Oh, no, that's the traditional. Maybe if I restart. Maybe. I remember of yesterday back before the Great Ones ruled Earth. Before the darkness, you. behind the stars of night, there were a great fire running in the sky. It spreads like the wind hot within its path, destruction for all. Becoming mightier as it go, the great fire hurls through space, none to know the world it brings. Space was full of old planets and giant tumbling pieces of worlds before, lying the path of the great fire into a giant old star. The great fire crashed with a mighty crash, exploding to everywhere, streak asteroids of burning rock and fire. Blue skies burned in the fury of the great fire. All around, I hear streets cry out loud, mountains rumble, as buildings explode, my home erupts. This world will never again be the same. New Earth would rise up from the rubble, out of the smoky landscape. The cataclysm awakes the sleeping giants from ancient worlds. With that animation. the barriers of time, Top they tier. invade our world. To conquer, to rule the whole human race. They rise to devour us. 
We kneel to worship them. They never stop, only to seek others for battle, for ultimate world domination. For primal rage. For primal rage. <laughs> yeah, so that's Primal Rage, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. <laughs> if you want to pick this game up, oh, it'd make me so happy. But anyway, stay tuned for Mystery Fighting Game Tournament. That's up next. <laughs>